the opening scene, a nurse at the hospital approaches a severely injured accident patient with great enthusiasm, making concerted efforts to make her speak. This is a rare occurrence, considering the patient's prolonged state of complete unresponsiveness. The nurse presents an alphabet board to the patient, Catherine, who due to her limited bodily function, has been unable to use most of her body and remains unable to speak. With only the ability to move her eyelids, Catherine has recently started communicating by blinking in response to letters called out by her nurse, Nikki. After blinking in response to certain letters shown to her by the nurse, the nurse can deduce what she's trying to say. A flashback reveals a speeding car in the woods, making a deliberate attempt to strike her. The narrative transitions to a point five weeks prior to the current event. A doctor conducts an examination of Catherine, revealing that she has suffered a head trauma resulting in damage to her brainstem, rendering her completely immobile. Having just awakened from a three-day coma, Catherine is currently unable to blink or express any emotions. When the doctor leaves, the same nurse, who had earlier facilitated the unconventional communication, approaches Catherine, introduces herself and assures Catherine of her commitment to aid in her recovery. She then encourages Catherine to attempt movement, starting with her left eye, but unfortunately, Catherine is unable to do so. In the subsequent scene, Nikki meets with Catherine's sole relative, Lena, and elucidates that the unfortunate woman is grappling with locked-in syndrome. This condition entails a lack of control over her entire body, with blinking serving as her sole method of communication. However, Catherine's functioning eye, crucial for this form of communication, has sustained an injury, rendering her unable to move it at present. This makes Lena becomes emotional and seeks assurance regarding Catherine's potential recovery. Nikki responds affirmatively, reassuring Lena that recovery is indeed possible. As their conversation deepens, the nurse expresses her eagerness to learn more about her patient. In response, Lena begins to share her story, prompting a flashback to 13 years earlier. She discloses that she has known Catherine her entire life. As a child, when Lena's mother and Catherine's friend passed away, Catherine assumed legal guardianship over Lena. They began living together in the opulent Rawling Manor. At that time, Catherine enjoyed wealth, glamour, and fame as a TV actress, and Lena admired and idolized her. However, everything changed when Catherine's husband passed away, disinheriting Catherine and leaving their wealth to their son, Jamie. This turn of events strained the relationship between Catherine and Lena as envy crept into Catherine's feelings. Lena recounts that she loved both Catherine and Jamie equally and desired for them to maintain a familial bond. Though she shared special connection with Jamie, after a playful day in the garden, Jamie suddenly experiences a seizure. Lena promptly calls Catherine, and together they attend to the boy. This reveals that Jamie has been battling illness throughout his entire life. Later at night, Catherine adorns herself beautifully and appears to be in high spirits. When Lena inquires about her where she's going, Catherine reveals she's meeting a director for a potential new TV role. It turns out she hasn't acted in nearly two years since her husband's demise. Lena wishes her good luck and closes the door. Following this, the two kids watch movies and share a delightful time bonding over the shared loss of their biological parents. As it turned out that Jamie's mother passed away when he was an infant, and his father married the TV goddess Catherine. However, it becomes evident that Jamie harbors resentment towards his stepmother. In response to Jamie's concerns, Lena assures him that they only have each other now and promises to always be by his side. In return, Jamie pledges to protect Lena. Returning to the present, Nikki and Lena continue their conversation. The nurse, displaying a naturally curious nature, seeks more details about her patient. She mentions the police report, indicating that Catherine was allegedly run over in a hit-and-run accident, but Lena expresses uncertainty about the accuracy of the information. She then raises the question of how Catherine became Lena's legal guardian and mother-in-law. Lena cryptically remarks, it's complicated, to which Nikki responds, I love complicated. The movie then shifts to a scene three years in the past, where Lena and Jamie are getting married. Their emotional bond has evolved into a romantic relationship, and everyone appears joyous about the union, except for Catherine. Catherine harbors the belief that Lena is a gold digger, insinuating that her motives are driven by the desire to inherit Jamie's property. During the dance ceremony, the celebration takes an abrupt turn when Jamie suffers a severe seizure. 
Lena's attempts to calm him prove futile, leading the family doctor, Lawrence, his personal physician, to carry him to his bedroom. Returning to the present, the nurse questions Lena about remembering her. When Lena appears confused, Nikki discloses that she had cared for a sick Jamie a few months ago. Meanwhile, back in the past, the relationship between Lena and Catherine continues to deteriorate. Jamie's health continues to decline rapidly, exacerbated by his growing addiction to painkillers. Lena pleads for him to stop taking them. He adamantly refuses. One evening, in an attempt to clear her mind, Lena decides to swim in a water nearby. Along the way, she meets Lawrence, the family doctor, who makes inappropriate advances and suggests she should socialize more. Lena, citing her sick husband, rejects his advances. As Lena immerses herself in the freezing water, she is alarmed by the tolling of bells, which Jamie uses to signal trouble. Rushing back to the manor, she discovers Jamie unconscious, having suffered another seizure. Lena rushes her husband to the hospital, where Nikki is assigned to take care of him. Lawrence visit to see Jamie at the hospital. Nikki questions him about the recklessness of prescribing such a high amount of painkillers for a fragile patient like Jamie. In response, Lawrence takes her outside the room and reprimands her for questioning his standards, particularly in front of the patient and family. Nikki remains steadfast, asserting that Jamie is now under her care. That evening, Lena has a private meeting with Lawrence, expressing her disappointment with the current situation. Despite her deep love for Jamie, she confesses to growing weary of caring for him, believing that he doesn't truly want to be cured, as he consistently disregards her advice. In response, Lawrence once again suggests that she take a break and have some fun, even proposing a short holiday. Later that night, Lena dreams of swimming with Lawrence, and the dream takes an unexpected resulting in almost kissing. She suddenly wakes up, then she realizes that she is developing feelings Lawrence. Lena documents her emotions in her personal diary before returning to sleep. As the days pass, Lena finds herself growing closer to Lawrence. Lawrence visits the house and plays tennis with Lena while Jamie watches. However, Lena's relationship with Catherine remains strained, and Jamie now requires a respirator at night. One evening, Lena visited a bar, and soon after, Lawrence joined her. Lena admits to making a mistake by being there, and he kindly offered to take her home if she felt uncomfortable. They left together in Lawrence's car, and during the journey, Lena, in an attempt to release her pent-up frustration, requested him to pull over. In that moment, she found solace in passionate intercourse with him. A few days later, it's Catherine's birthday, prompting the family to organize a small celebration. Lawrence is invited, and Lena plays a beautiful song on the piano for her mother-in-law. Just when the atmosphere seems positive, Catherine begins expressing her frustrations. She talks about Lena's deceased mother in a derogatory manner, claiming that she was envious of her accomplishments. Lena asserts that her mother wasn't a jealous person and declares that her mother was a million times the woman Catherine could ever be. Catherine responds by claiming that she was the one who insisted on becoming Lena's legal guardian, emphasizing that Lena would have ended up in a foster home like her if she hadn't intervened. This revelation infuriates Lena, prompting her to leave the table. Before walking away, she informs Catherine that the manor now belongs to her and Jamie. Jamie tells Catherine that Lena has never been in love with him the way she is with her. Later that night, Lena and Jamie engage in an argument. Lena expresses her frustration with how her life has unfolded, unable to even leave the house due to her caretaking responsibilities. In his defense, Jamie contends that she would be nothing without him. Unfortunately, this only intensifies Lena's anger, causing her love for him to diminish. The next morning, Lena meets with her new lover, Lawrence. When she informs Lawrence that she wants to leave Jamie to be with him, he refuses, citing concerns that Catherine would destroy him. In response, Lena conveys her readiness to do whatever it takes to be with him. Lawrence relents, but cautions her that they must be brave. Undeterred, Lena reaffirms her commitment, and they make love again leaving poor Jamie alone in his room. In the next scene, Lawrence prescribes Jamie with new medications, providing momentary relief to his pain. They embark on a boat outing, seemingly for a pleasant experience. Lena expresses concern about Jamie's ability to swim, but Jamie reassures her that everything will be fine. Jamie apologizes for his previous statements, and the trio sets off on the boat, 
with Lawrence taking charge of the rowing. Lawrence suggests heading to a small island in the middle of the water for a picnic. Upon arriving at the supposed location, he continues rowing, causing Lena to grow increasingly worried. Jamie becomes concerned as well, questioning what's happening. When they reach the other side of the small island, Lawrence greets workers cutting down trees and deliberately lets one of the oars into the water. In the attempt to retrieve it, the boat capsizes. Lena struggles to save Jamie by grabbing him. Lawrence lurks in the shadows. However, Jamie, in his search for Lawrence, ends up drowning under the water. Shockingly, it becomes apparent that Lawrence had orchestrated the entire scenario, deliberately pulling Jamie's legs to ensure his tragic demise. Helpless, Lena witnesses her husband's tragic death, and the police arrive shortly afterward. Lawrence provides them with a fabricated story, but Lena, consumed by fear, refrains from revealing the truth, concerned about being held accountable for her husband's demise. Catherine, despite her complex feelings towards Jamie, breaks down at the water's edge, mourning the loss of her son. In the present, as Nikki hears the story, she becomes increasingly suspicious. She questions Lena about allowing the boat trip, and Lena insists it was Jamie's idea. Nikki unexpectedly inquires about the duration of Lena's relationship with Lawrence, noting she has seen them together frequently. Struggling for an answer, Lena faces Nikki's growing suspicion that Jamie's death was not accidental, but a deliberate act to remove him from their lives. Lena insists it was just an accident. Nikki believes there is more to the story. Following this, after her husband's death, Lena starts experiencing nightmares, witnessing the entire room around her drowning in water. One restless night, Lawrence enters her room and engages intimately with her. Surprisingly, despite the fact that he was involved in her husband's death, Lena continues to trust him. The following evening, they meet in Lawrence's car to discuss their next steps. Lena is desperate to leave the place and start a new life with him. Lawrence agrees, proposing that she sells the house to provide them with the necessary funds for a fresh start. However, Lena, still considering Catherine her mother, refused, citing a promise she made never to sell the Rolling Manor. When she attempts to leave the car, Lawrence stops her, revealing that he has her diary. Perplexed, Lena questions why he has her diary. Lawrence claims that Jamie's death is well documented here, so if she tries to betray him, he will expose her to the authorities. After this, he finally lets her run away. In the following scene, when Lena arrives home, she is confronted with a shocking sight. Lawrence is getting intimate with her mother-in-law, Catherine. This heartbreaking discovery brings her to tears, leading her to realize that Lawrence never truly loved her. He was merely motivated by self-interest. Despite his attempts to explain, Lena rejects his explanations. When she attempts to leave, he becomes aggressive once again and pushes her to the ground. Somehow, Lena manages to escape, rushing to her room and securing the door. Lawrence and Catherine quickly follow, attempting to force their way in. Their joint efforts reveal a sinister motive they aim to eliminate Lena to seize the entire fortune for themselves. Yet, Lena is resolute and won't give up without a fight. She enters a storeroom and cleverly outwits Lawrence. With quick thinking, she stabs his hand with a fork, pinning it to the wall. Following this, she manages to escape the house and disappear into the woods. Catherine, armed with a gun, mounts a horse and gives chase. Lawrence breaks free and begins searching for her in his car. After a pursuit, they eventually corner her in an open field. Catherine aims her gun at Lena, pulls the trigger, and the screen fades to black. The movie then transitions to the present, where Nikki pleads with Lena to confess everything. Just then, they receive news that Catherine has started blinking, indicating her ability to communicate. Nikki quickly approaches her with an alphabet board, and it is here that Catherine spells the word murder. Lena observes the situation from a distance, wearing a concerned expression on her face. She later meets with Lawrence and shares the news about Catherine's ability to communicate. This revelation worries him, leading the two to devise of another plan. Lena suggests taking Catherine home and eliminating her before she reveals more information. The two sneak into the hospital, place Catherine in a wheelchair, and discreetly take her away. By the time Nikki arrives, it's already too late. She didn't find Catherine and witnesses the three of them leaving in their car. Upon reaching home, Lawrence begins working on a drug. The plan is to inject it into Catherine to cause her death, 
relying on the existing medications in her bloodstream to obscure any traces. They aim to make her demise appear accidental, so it will look like she was discharged, then passed away peacefully in her sleep. While Lawrence is engrossed in preparing the drug, Lena receives a text from the nurse. The message drops a major bombshell. Catherine didn't want to kill her. She actually saved her on that fateful night. Lena, now torn about what to do and whom to trust, takes matters into her own hands. She decides to uncover the truth and trick Lawrence to go outside. During his absence, she approaches Catherine and asks if she indeed saved her that night. The mother-in-law confirms this with a blink. Flashback to the main event night on that fateful night. While Lena was fleeing for her life with Lawrence in pursuit, determined to kill her, Catherine had a change of heart. She aimed her gun and shot Lawrence's car tire, forcing him to stop. This distraction allowed Lena to escape. However, when Catherine tried to flee, she tripped and fell on the road. Lawrence, seeing Catherine on the road, stopped the car to speak with her. She told him to let Lena go and threatened that if he harm her, she will go public with the truth. It is at this point that Lawrence took revenge on Catherine by running her over instead. In the present, Lena is now determined to save her mother-in-law. She hides a knife behind her, ready to use it at an opportune moment. When Lawrence returns, he prepares to inject Catherine with the drug. But Lena steps forward and says that she wants to do it herself. He obliges and gives her the injection. Lena then pretends to start the procedure, and once he is distracted, she injects him with the needle instead. This doesn't kill Lawrence as the dose is too little for him. He knock her away and proceeds to finish off Catherine. But in the last second, Lena gets up and stabs him with the knife, in the chest finally killing him. In the aftermath of this incident, the police arrive at the scene. As they are loading the corpse away, Lena, Catherine, and Nikki watch them from a distance. Lena asks if the nurse will reveal their secret, but the latter doesn't respond. The movie ends as the mother and daughter finally hold hands after a long time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this.